And look at this, the scores are lower. This should not be happening. This is kind of mind blowing. And this is gonna be a whole controversy in itself. It's like TMZ, duh, 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 duh. breaking news, M2 MacBook Air controversy. You've heard the controversy, but now let's see if it's actually true, because in front of me are two MacBook Airs, but they are not identical MacBook Airs, because on my right, the one with the blue wallpaper, is a base model M2 MacBook Air with a slower 256 gigabyte SSD, and then of course the M2 chip with the eight GPU cores. On my left with this macOS Ventura wallpaper is the higher end version of the M2 MacBook Air. So not only does it get the full M2 chip with the 10 GPU cores, but it also has a faster 512 gigabyte SSD, which should give us about double the performance out of the base model. But for today's video, I wanna find out how much of a difference does this actually make? Because people are making a big deal about these SSD drives. So we actually wanna see, does this impact performance in any meaningful way? And I also wanna test this 10 core GPU in this fanless MacBook Air design to see if it's actually worth the extra $100 to upgrade from that over the bin version uh, with the eight GPU cores. So let's get into the video. We, 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 don't, we don't got any time to waste. Now, first of all, I just wanna make this point. Uh, we don't have to do too many CPU benchmarks because these are the same CPU. So I just wanna show you that uh, by opening up Geekbench on both of these and running through a benchmark really quick because the only difference between these two machines should be uh, the GPU and then that faster SSD. So let's go ahead, you can see over here, uh, Apple M2 chip on both of them. They're both on the same software version and they both have the eight gigabytes of memory. So you can see that I am not a liar. I am not a liar. I am many things but I'm not a liar. Uh, so let's run this benchmark. It's meaningless, but let's go ahead and run it anyway. All right, so the Geekbench benchmark is finished. Obviously, uh, the CPU scores are very similar. It's actually funny that one got a higher single core score barely, and then the other one got the uh, higher multi-core score. I really don't know how that works out with a, with a Geekbench benchmark. That's kind of funny, but you can see these are both the same uh, CPU performance in these MacBooks. So let's actually go over to benchmarks that matter. So the first one I wanna do is the disk speed test. Let's see how much faster the 512 gigabyte drive is compared to the 256 gigabyte drive. So let's go ahead and start the test on both of these. Start your engines. And you can already see the write speed on the left is obviously faster. And the read speed is a lot faster as well. So you can see that, uh, you know, Basically what we knew already, uh, unless you didn't know the controversy, the base model uh, MacBook Air has a slower drive in it. So you're gonna get faster read or write speeds on any of the higher storage tiers, but if you are on a budget and you are going for that base model, well, you can see you are getting much slower speeds here. But now we need to find out if this is actually going to impact performance in any meaningful way. Well, I think one area where you might see a performance difference is transferring files. So I got a Thunderbolt SSD drive over here and we're gonna transfer a file to both uh, MacBook Airs and see how much of a difference the speed makes. All right, so here we have the uh, drive plugged in. We're just basically going to drag this out. Now this is what, a 34? 33 gigabyte file uh, transferring over to the MacBook. We're gonna start with the faster speed first and let's go ahead and see how it goes. So this is going pretty fast, I'm gonna have to stop this very quickly. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And that took about 14 seconds to take that uh, 33 gigabyte file and basically put it on this Mac, but let's go ahead and try it on uh, the one with the slower disk speed, the 33 gigabyte file, and we are going to copy it to the desktop. Okay, and you can already see this is taking longer. So we are past the 14 second mark. Okay, it's really ramping down towards the end over here. It was going a lot faster in the beginning. So this is more than double the time so far to transfer this over. Okay, and it finally finished. That was quite a difference. I was not expecting that much of a difference. I thought it would take about double the time, but it's taken much more than that. Uh, it took about 14 seconds for the 512 gigabyte model to transfer that over. It took 
55 seconds on the slower 256 gigabyte model to transfer that from a fast Thunderbolt drive. So the disk speed here is much slower. And if you are doing file transfers, that is a, that's a noticeable difference. Is it the end of the world? No, I mean, it still did it in 55 seconds, but it is going to take more time and the more files you would have to transfer over, well, the more time it would take. All right, let's do another test. This time we're going to be doing a video export test in Final Cut Pro. Uh, first, we're going to export a very simple 10 minute 4K clip uh, to H.264, and we're gonna see which MacBook finishes faster. Now, the thing to note here is that this one does have a 10 GPU core and a faster drive. Uh, so that might make a difference here, but let's see, let's find out together. So we're going to export both of these and I'm gonna try and hit the timer as quickly as I can. Okay, that was pretty good. Uh, that's skill right there, that's benchmarking skill. Uh, so let's go ahead and monitor the results. All right, uh, so far these are the same. These are neck and neck pretty much, uh, both exporting at the same time at 32%. So maybe there actually won't be any performance differences. Maybe the media engines inside of the M2 chip are really uh, kind of taking all of the work over here that maybe we might expect for the drive or the, you know, the extra GPU cores on this higher spec version might not even matter. Okay, so this is interesting. So. Uh, that did finish out about like a two seconds early. Um, but again, these are well within the margin of error. So I'm just gonna chalk it up to whatever. Uh, so yeah, these export it at pretty much exactly the same time, which I think was about five minutes and four seconds. Okay, and this time we will be exporting to ProRes. Let's see if I can get that timer right again. So let's start the export, click on that and Beautiful, I'm just so good at this. Okay, now this is actually pretty interesting. So while we didn't see any advantage with H.264 footage, it's obvious right now that the higher end version of the MacBook Air does have an advantage when exporting to ProRes footage. Uh, it's about 50% of the way done right now, and the base model is at about 38%. So yeah, we are actually seeing some faster times exporting to ProRes footage on this high, higher end version. All right, so the higher end version finished that export in three minutes and 24 seconds. Okay, and it takes the base model MacBook Air four minutes and 32 seconds to finish that same ProRes export. So there was a noticeable difference when exporting ProRes video. Uh, the higher end version of the MacBook Air beat this by a little bit over a minute in export time. So if you're dealing with ProRes footage, if you need to save that extra minute when exporting, well, I guess it actually gonna be beneficial to pay more for the higher spec version. Now, like I said earlier at the start of this video, um, it isn't just the disk speed that's different between these two models. Uh, this higher end version of the MacBook Air has two extra GPU cores, and that's one of the areas where I really want to test that. So to start off, let's do a GFX benchmark, uh, which is going to test the GPUs on both of these machines. We're going to be using the 4K Aztec Ruins high tier off screen to benchmark this. All right, well, at least in this benchmark, we can see those two extra GPU cores working for uh, this MacBook Air, and it is giving us a improvement over the base model. So the uh, higher end version of the MacBook Air gets 48 frames per second on average, while the eight core model gets 39 FPS on average. Now the GFX benchmark is a cross platform benchmark, that's fine, uh, but let's actually see how this does with an actual game. Uh, we're going to benchmark Shadow of the Tomb Raider on both of these machines, because I'm not trying to play both of these games at the same exact time. Uh, with a track, but like how would you, how would I benchmark a game if I'm playing at the same time? I guess I could play them both individually, but I think it's easier just to run the benchmark. Just going through this early part of the benchmark, you can already see that the 10 core model does have a slight advantage over the eight GPU core model. And you can see that the uh, frames per second are higher in these scenes. So something very interesting is happening as this benchmark runs even longer. You can see that the, uh, eight core GPU model is actually scoring higher frames per second than the 10 core GPU model. And if I put my finger on the top over here, um, 
this version, the, the 10 core GPU model is hotter. This is hotter than the eight core GPU model. And look at this, the scores are lower. This should not be happening. Uh, this has a stronger GPU in it. It should be outperforming the eight core model. It's an extra $100 to upgrade to the 10 core model. And you should not be seeing any lower performance out of this machine. And I don't know how this is going to end up in the final benchmark, but this is a, this is crazy. The eight core model is running faster right there. And look at this, at the end result, this is kind of mind blowing. And this is gonna be a whole controversy in itself. Uh, the 10 core GPU model in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider GPU benchmark scored worse than the base model, eight core GPU model. Again, that is a hundred dollar upgrade to step up to this 10 GPU core. My assumption is that this thing throttled more because of the heat that the extra GPU cores were enabled. Because when we started this test, you could see that the frames per second were higher, but this thing quickly throttled down the GPU core to cool it off, while the eight core model didn't have to. And at the end of the day, even though the scores are very close, they both averaged 42 FPS overall, the frames, the total frames rendered on the eight core model is 6,628 compared to the 10 core model at 6,590. This is something I did not expect. Uh, this is actually really crazy that the eight core model, it won in an actual game benchmark. Now I actually wanna see this again. I wanna put this on the highest settings for the benchmark and see if maybe that will give the 10 GPU core an advantage or if the eight GPU core is still gonna win out here. And I am kind of not believing my eyes here again. Uh, we are running this benchmark again on the highest settings, and this actually caused the 10 core GPU uh, to throttle even faster than before. Uh, we're actually seeing the frame rates dip lower at the start uh, compared to the eight core GPU model. This is this is really, really bad news for the 10 core model. I am, I am shocked right now. And I am just seeing that this eight core model is either having higher frame rates or about the same frame rates as this 10 core GPU model. Uh, people are gonna be very upset when they watch this video. All right, we finished the benchmark on the highest settings and we basically got very similar results. Now, both of these machines have an average frame rate of 31 frames per second, but you can actually see over here on this little thing, there is still a slight advantage to the uh, eight core model of the M2 MacBook Air, rendering a total of 4,755 frames while the 10 core model only rendered 4,664. All right, what can we learn from these very confusing benchmarks with the GPU? Uh, well, I think the takeaway here is pretty simple, but I'm willing to admit I may be wrong on this. Uh, I think what is happening is in the instance of GFX bench, uh, that shorter, less intensive benchmark did not get the GPU cores hot enough to experience any thermal throttling. So the 10 core GPU, maybe that benchmark is better optimized. It is a metal benchmark, right? So that was able to take full advantage of the GPU. It didn't throttle. And that's why we saw a higher score on the 10 core model, like we should. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider though, it's obviously running through Rosetta. It's very unoptimized and it's gonna make both of these systems hot when running it. So what happened there is that the 10 core GPU model obviously generate it more heat. And because of that, because it doesn't have an active cooling system, the 10 core model had to throttle down those 10 GPU cores faster than what we saw on the eight core model. So even though the eight core model has less GPUs, should be less powerful, it had better sustained performance because it wasn't generating as much heat and it meant it could keep up its performance. Whereas the 10 core one just had to throttle down and it made that, uh, weaker than the eight core model. It was just generating way too much heat. And that's why we saw that lower score. And listen, I know Macs aren't you know known for gaming. 
Uh, you might be buying this not even gaming. You might, depending on your workflow, like we saw with that ProRes export, you might see an advantage with the 10 GPU core model, especially for shorter uh, workload bursts and things that aren't going to cause this to have sustained heat, sustained performance, right, with that GPU, something that's not gonna maximize the GPU cores. But if you are maximizing GPU cores, if you are gaming, or if you are doing a task, maybe like 3D rendering that would really peg those GPU cores, uh, you might actually see worse performance on the 10 core model, which is not good. Uh, either way, I think the safest conclusion I can make is that this 10 core GPU model probably is not worth the extra $100. I think that's fair to assume at this point. The, the fanless design of the M2 MacBook Air cannot take full advantage of the 10 GPU core design, which just based on my testing right here, it, it does seem like a pretty useless upgrade. And actually, depending on what you're doing, if, you're, if it's similar to, if you're playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider at least, you're gonna see better performance on the eight core model for sustained uh, gaming, which if you're gaming, you're gaming more than one minute, right? Like, like maybe for the first minute of playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you'll get better performance on the 10 core GPU model. But after that, you need, it, yeah, that's crazy. So let's, let's take away from this video what we can. So is the higher storage tier worth it? Yes, obviously you're going to get more storage and it's faster storage. We saw in the transfer test that you're able to transfer files much faster on the faster disk speed. But if you look at all the checkboxes on the MacBook Air's website, if you just go look at the base model and you start customizing this MacBook Air, you may want to avoid clicking that 10 core GPU option. You might just wanna go for the base model, eight core CPU and eight core GPU. That seems to be handling GPU tasks just as well, and I guess better than this 10 core GPU. It definitely doesn't need to throttle as much, and it definitely does not get as hot as the 10 core model. So based on this video, that would be my recommendation to you if you want the best MacBook Air, uh, if, you wanna, if you don't wanna spend money on useless upgrades, uh, get the eight core GPU model, get the 512 gigabytes of storage, and I think that's going to be the best bang for your buck. Either way, these were really surprising results on the GPU test in particular. I was not expecting this. I knew the 10 core would probably get hot. I knew it wouldn't be able to realize the full gains of the 10 GPU core, but to actually have it perform worse than the eight GPU core, that was a shock to me. So uh, listen, I really wanna hear from you in the comments below. What do you think of this news about the uh, eight core model actually outperforming the 10 core GPU model in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark? Um, did you order a 10 GPU core model? Is that a cause for concern for you? Um, or are you glad maybe that you picked uh, the lower base model? Either way, really interested to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Uh, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please give me a like if you wanna see more from the channel. Uh, maybe I'll have to do more tests with more games or something like that. I don't know, this is, this is like breaking news in my head. So I kind of have to process all of that. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see more, obviously, as we do more tests. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Tim Cook, what are you doing? <laughs>